yes, I remember you liking that one. Uh, yeah, that one just sold straight away, didn't it? I'd quite like to, um, I'd quite like to go to the kennels yeah. and see if we can get something a bit like that again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you don't have to be quiet. People like it when you talk. I've got Jane in today. Hello Heather, hello Sarah, hello Annaline, hello Louise, hello Stephen, Yvonne, Celia, Annie Ball, hello, don't just run away now, I know you're there. I was thinking Annie, it'd be lovely to play again together. Hello Sarah, <laughs> hair looking great, looking a bit Grayson Perry. Hello, Marianne Ray. Ooh, coffee, yes, please. I don't usually drink coffee during the day, but I didn't have time to make a pot of tea, and as you know, I like to drink a pot rather than... My hair's looking great today. I'm afraid I'm still overdue a... a root touch-up. Hello, Joanne. Here I am. Hello, Sheila. I've got a bit of an idea of doing something today, which I'm setting up. Um, quickly. I thought it would be quite fun to have like, a whole load of cockerels like doing their thing and um, I'll just very very quickly tip you up while I finish off this last bit on, on here just so that I've got the right just so I've got something dry. Well then where am I? Yes. I'm just gonna do the last red bits of this one cockerel and then I can then I can leave it to dry under the fire ready for the next phase. Okay. Hello Emma. A cockerel disco that's exactly what it is. They're gonna there's this that one's like rushing away that way. That one is like, and then this one's like doing his stuff like that. And then that one's like, what's going on here? And that one's doing its own thing. So I'll just put them, don't want them to be bone dry. Kevin Ridley, hello. Gordon Moore, hello. This type of start is so fascinating to me. No pencil, gut. yeah. just sort of have a bit of an idea in my head and it's to be honest it's not the first time I've done uh, a painting like that so it's it's not like it's the very very first time I've been to a few of those cockerel discos <laughs> oh strutting his stuff that where I grated myself with a carrot, still so sore. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a little sip of my tea. Cool. So I finished that big poppy painting, and you know what? I got to the end of it and I thought, I think I'm going to get this made into a print. I only produce, how many prints a year? Three, two? Jane? She's trying to be quiet. She's so shy. She's like a little retiring mouse. Not. She's usually just a few, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so I got to the end and I thought, actually, this, it was really quite, it's the, it's the poppy painting that I used to say live video today. Uh, gosh, I'm looking a bit busty, aren't I? Um, and I just thought it was really quite loud and quite... Who's having a lie down? Oh, Jane. Did... Jane, Marianne Ray says you're having a lie down. 
so shy. Um, no, Jane's working on help, you know, as I was saying, and like, hello Wendy, hello Hilary, hello, yeah, anyway, yeah, yesterday I forgot to say what I'm doing different this year, calendars and diaries, instead of just having one, one type of inside, like all different stuff, hairs and sheep and flowers and things, instead of doing that, or should I say as well, I'm going to have three types, and uh, normally what I have is like three different, three different covers, and the same inside, and the same with the calendars. This year, no Margaret, I won't be doing a print of that, because there's already a print of Light Sussex called Woodlanders, um, no. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a flowers calendar. So I'll have flowers on the outside and every 12, every month there'll be a new flower. A hounds and fox diary and calendar. Hound on the outside, hounds and foxes throughout. And a flower. Did I say flower? And then a general mixed one with something on the outside and then mix things in the inside. So basically instead of having 12 a double page spread and a cover, 12, 13, instead of having 14 pictures, a photograph and some text, multiply that by three. So it just takes forever. So Jane's checking them for me. Either that or she's having a nap, but she is doing rustling so that's a good sign. I need a lockdown memory. John Hutton is watching. Watching live for a change. Hello, John Hutton. Nice to see you. I hope you're keeping well. Can we, we can help name your paintings. Go for it. And Fiona's watching. Hello, Fiona. So, yesterday's... Good morning. Good morning, Beth. Um, you might have missed the first thing. This is the start of a cockerel disco. Well, I just finished a bit of that. I'd quite like, like it to dry a bit. If I can work in between these two, then it should work. Three-legged sheep. Marianne Ray, that sheep painting is sold. So, <laughs> hello, a cheerful smile on a grey day. Oh, no, terrible teeth. Right. So I'm just having a little look. I'm just getting an idea. Right. We'll be will some be standing on one leg? Sheila, sarcasm has always been and still is the lowest form of wit. We all know that. I think we've ascertained. The one you're you're doing is called Cockle Disco. Yes, we're doing this one as well, actually. The person who chooses the winning... I managed to get the uh, little rubbery novel on the bottom of my stool. Well, it's not a stool, it's a sort of chair slash stool. A, a chair or a stair. Eating a worm cock disco. One cockerel will strike a gentle one. Right, anyway. Let's tip you up before there's any more nonsense. Oh, so wrinkly. I'll try not to do the wrinkly. Okay. Oh, got my glasses on. Right, I think. I'll do a little bit to the eye, because at the moment the important thing is to be able to keep working, so don't shoot myself in the foot by doing a whole load of work maybe on one area, which precludes me from then going back to it, so I'm having to just think of it carefully. Right, where's my small brush? Can we see? Oh, I don't know whether you can. I'm going to just have another little fiddle. So 
worry about this. Flipping thing. I have to pull it towards me for you to be able to see it, which is quite a weird concept. Righty ho. So this is the little beady cockerel eye. Can you hear the logs crackling in the fire? Another chilly day. I think it's going to be a bracing swim tonight in the lake. And remember, I always have it a bit darker at the top of here because the, the red bits act as a bit of a, a sort of shade. Yeah, that's about, that's about right. Just a little sip of coffee. So yeah, yesterday's square cockerel painting is now on its way to the guy who does the scanning for me, who I'm always scared to ask because he, I don't know, he's, I always feel he does it fairly reluctantly as a favour. It isn't a favour because I pay, but um, yeah, he seems to have plenty to do. Right. Sitting in the water. I hope Tim Sokol's not there because he takes a dim view of me leaving my brushes in the water. He hasn't said it, but I can sense it. Tim Sokol is a calligrapher. He's very, very good. Right, scrap paper. Okay. I've decided it's going to be, he's going to have one leg. Right.
quite a good start, I think. No pressure. First time I've painted some serious chicken feet in, in company. Oh, can you believe I've been asked to do this for Jasmine Women's Institute on Monday and it would have been churlish to have said no. And did I tell you that, Jane? Yeah. They sent an email. They actually asked me to do something last year. Well, I don't... As you know, why is that dog barking? I don't um, really do. I love you, know your subject so well. Thank you, Beth. That's very sweet of you. Thanks, gang. My glasses are broken, and because of you, I've been able to get an appointment at Skip Spec Savers because of me. Hello, Deb. He's thinking about chasing us. I'm sure you're never churlish. Anyway, yes, I don't really do um, like talks and demonstrations because there's just there's not enough time. Obviously, this is lockdown, and I've devoted so much of my time to you people um, and my ego. Um, but I've got myself wangled into doing a Zoom demo on Monday for Jasmine Women's Institute. Scary. Right. Online for the Wild Indian Club. I right, tip you up. Tippy tippy tippy. Right, to ho And just start building up this sort of a bit of a bosky background, I would say, like woody and mm. maybe have some sycamore leaves coming down. I'm just thinking sycamore because there's a big sycamore tree right out there. Just wondering why that dog's barking. You wouldn't do a favour, would you, Jane? Please. I can't You can't? I thought I could hear a dog barking before. Maybe not. If you open the balcony door, you'd probably get a... If you open, if you open the, the door on the mezzanine floor out onto the balcony, I'm just telling them how lovely it is here, um, you might hear... Tell them to go onto YouTube. No, it's raining. Oh, that's a relief. Thank Do you know what it is? It's the dripping I've just remembered. It's cause of... I think that's what it is. Ruth Brown is watching. Hello, Ruth Brown. Hello, John Armstrong. Hello, Veronica Harding. Make sure you do product placement. I'll try and remember. I keep forgetting. Right, so I'm doing some nice sycamore leaves here. When I say nice, I mean they're just sycamore leaves. It's the, They're dripping down this... Um, since we cleaned out... Oh, dear. Since we cleaned out all the drains and the uh, and the gutters and stuff, every time it rains, there's this like really strange, irritating drip that makes me think the dogs are barking. Marv and Dorothy and I went for a nice walk last night. Quite a big walk. And Marv pulled the whole way and his neck is literally about sort of about that big because he's so small and scrawny. I had to wrap um, a strap for a, uh, a spur. I've got these webbing spur straps that I use as a collar for him and I had to wrap it twice. That's like for non-horsey people for attaching a spur to your boots and it's not like a sharp spur, it's just a little... Uh, it's just like a little, well, it's a spur. Um, anyway, I used I used that as a collar, and he just pulled and pulled. I think he enjoyed his walk. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, so Margaret or Heather, you may well be members of Jasmine Women's Institute. That is, after all, your neck of the woods, is it not? I used to be in the Women's Institute when I lived at Elsdon when I was a young mum, aged 20. Um, because I didn't have really a massive amount else going on and it really was the most exciting thing in the area. And actually I met some really, really lovely people who have remained friends to this day. And I do remember quite enjoying it, but they had this... I uh, was after the Rose Bowl, every year they had a competition and uh, you could, the prize was a Rose Bowl. And to win the Rose Bowl, you had to um, accumulate the highest number of points from the monthly competition. And some, some months it was a scone or a patterned plate or a pretty tea cosy or something more complicated like a quiche. Um, and I didn't do particularly well on any of the bait things, but I was um, persistent. And I just, I worked out that if I entered every month, every single month, without fail, the likelihood was I, I, I stood a really good chance of winning the Rose Bowl. And also I was very, very focused. And I was literally... I was within a whisker of winning it. Um, but sadly, somebody called Annie Snaith, whose name literally covered all the um, engravable area on the Rose Bowl, she won it yet again. And I was gutted and I just gave in after that. In fact, I think I moved here. And... Um, Never joined another women's institute. So I'm sort of imagining it's underneath a lovely branch with all these sycamore leaves. Speaking of trees and leaves, our ash trees are not in a good way. I don't know about you lot. Can you see? Sounds as if Marth's doing well. I live... Yeah, but, yeah, but Jasmine's quite close to Fenham. Well, go. I'll wear my school hat. Good prize. My first prize for dancing in Ireland was a cross pen engraved with ladies for her. Hmm. Nice. And if you can't see, I am just, I'm just getting my paint from this area of greens, yellows, and some blue here. Oh God, don't talk to me about cakes. I don't know why, but Fifey's like, he turned into a cake monster. He keeps saying, when are you gonna bake me a cake? And really, he wants me to do it today. I'm gonna do some baking after lunch, Jane. Two o'clock. Oh, bad luck. You missed the cake. <laughs> Poor Jane. Her children are back at school for how many How many hours altogether? Today's the first day, incidentally. It's half nine, half ten, half eleven, half twelve. Is it just like five hours? Sorry? Yes. You've got to be careful what you say. I was just talking to the husband of the woman who is head of out of school education services for Northumberland. And I was hearing about her job. So basically she must um, be in charge of the, the teaching that goes on in people's homes for children who are very ill or children with um, uh, maybe behavioral problems or something. So they can't go to normal school or children with very infectious or anyway whatever and oh dear you tell me some sad stories about what's gone on during lockdown terrible um 
Right. Shall we find a slightly bigger brush? I had an idea when I was in my having a wakeful a wakeful period during the night about a way of a way of like creating a an interesting background based on those old things you used to do where you would have all the different colours and then you would put black wax, scribble back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, till it was covered in black wax, and then you would scrape away your image, which would be made up of the rainbow colours underneath. And I was thinking about um I was thinking about somehow doing something like that in a painting and I think it's totally doable. So it would be almost like doing this. Like do maybe stripes of different colour. And then when it's bone dry do the thing where you paint everything except the shape that you want. So for instance, a leaf could be made up of whatever those colours are. It was just a thought that came into my head. Right, what are you talking about? If I were you, I'd pretend you were going to the post office buy a cake from somewhere. The problem is, Jules, that's the difference between you and me. There is a deceitful side to you. I couldn't tell a lie if I tried. Could I, Jane? No. Oh, that's good. She said no. She said no straight away without any hesitation. And that was good. Thank you, Jane. Oh, can you see? I'm never quite sure. Again, this is still early days for this painting. And the little claw, little toe. I wonder if there should be a bit. Oh, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to be searching for toes, are they? Oh, somebody asked me if I paint standing up. I don't know whether that person's watching today, but um, in answer, yes, I usually do paint standing up. And there is a slope to this. It's probably about, oh, maybe only about 15% away from um, horizontal, actually. If you have too much of a slope, my jars of flowers, like... Like this jar of flowers, they just slide towards you and tip all their water onto your lap. Okay, so this is quite a nice thing going on here, I think. Um, I'm thinking I might do something similar. But a slightly different colours, maybe. It's quite nice having like the neat shape of the cockle and then this quite wild stuff going on around the edge. It's an interesting contrast, I think.
Right, I'd be inclined to let that dry now. So I'm going to go and put that. We're sending up little hearts to show how much we like what you did with the red paint. Mm. Thank you very much. Now don't go away, I'm just going to put this on the floor underneath the fire. Standing up, won't your glass of strength then be wrong? Right, Margaret, uh, you're absolutely right. I usually, if I'm starting a painting standing up, I don't think I even wear glasses for that first. If I'm if I'm quite a long way away, uh, yeah, I would I would just uh, do the the stuff that's this far, like maybe this far away, I would do that without glasses, you're absolutely right. And it's only as I get a bit closer that I wear them. Loving the background technique at the feet. Thank you, Deb. Drink tea. Check time. Thank you, Jules. No, Beth, there won't be any sparks. It's a wood-burning fire. It's a yotel. I bought it because it's got the word slut on it, which um, is engraved. It's quite funny. I Remind me when I do the studio tour to show you it. It's got some Norwegian writing on and it's just so funny that it literally does have the word slut on. I don't know what it means. And I think it's called like um, a big bear or a great bear wood burning stove. It's big. Bought it because you can put massive logs in. So there won't be any, any sparks now. Sparks will fly now. Massive brush. Right. Just getting the uh, getting the colour. Can you see? I'm just really 
putting the necks on them so that I've got um, a bit of structure to this. Just try and get this first sort of bit. So this one's looking back the way. Where's that? And this one. Okay, so that's quite a nice start. No, it's not. I want to do something else. This is actually a colour that is not in the Ludlow range. I don't use it very often. It's quite an unnatural blue but it's shouting out at me right now. Use me, use me. Trying to get an idea. So that one's sort of doing that. That one's looking back. Okay. 
So we've just got the start of something going on. Well, you've got to remember, I look at cockerels all the time. This morning I went down and there was a cockerel and a hen sitting on um, a set of rails. And I thought, oh, this is so cute. But I'm not that keen on cute. I'm, I'm more interested in this. Sorry. really like this sort of display of um, like sheer... I don't know, masculinity really, no chickens in there, all cockles. Uh, I don't think it is phalo blue. I don't think, I don't think I know what it's called. It was probably brought as a mistake, but it's quite fun now and again. Do you have a picture in your mind? Yes, a bit, a bit. Um, and the thing which I quite like to do with this painting, and I might have to do before I see you next, is before it's completely dry, I quite like to run some pure water from one end to the other to get a lot of bleed and movement. So, right, well I think we'll leave it at that for today. And um, have a lovely time. I think I'm around tomorrow. At the moment, what day is it today? Today's Wednesday. Tomorrow's Thursday. I think I'm here tomorrow, yeah. Beth, my name's Winter. I've been out with a few ends on my time. It's that Kevin Walker again. You calling me Ronnie Corbett. Anyway. I am going now and it's been lovely spending time with most of you and um, see you tomorrow. Bye.